Yeah, okay. I think we can start now. I'll just wait enough. So uh, the problem two was uh, so we want to calculate the number of n digit sequences with digit zero, one, two, three, uh, which do not con which do not contain any of uh, these four sequences. And so we want to find generation code for the generating function for a n. Uh, so first of all, let's try to find if any if there are any recurrence relations on uh, sequences a n. Hello, and so what so what happened? Let's look at the last symbol of the uh, our sequences. So if the last digit is two or three, then we can put any uh, uh, any such sequences of length n minus one. So it, the number of such sequences is exactly a n minus one. But if the last digit is zero or one, then it's forbidden to put zero and one here uh, because we cannot contain any of these sequences. So uh, again, we have two and three. Can we, we can put two and three here, and then we can put any of the sequences of n minus two. Uh, so here we have two possibilities for a n minus one, and here we have four possibilities to for a n minus two. Hence we have recurrent relations a n equal to two, two a n minus one plus four a n minus two. Uh, and from this we can uh, get the generation function uh, just similar to the similar way that we have in generation function for the Fibonacci numbers. So we look at uh, form of our series with the coefficients in a n, and then just take uh, multiplied by one minus two uh, t minus four t squared, uh, time f. Uh, time ft will be just a. So maybe I will uh, draw it here. So we have f of t is a zero plus a one t plus a two t squared, etc. And we need to multiply by 2t and this will be have 2a0t plus 2a1t squared plus etc and then 4t squared f of t will be 4a0t squared plus etc and then you subtract the uh, to this from all series from the first one and we'll have Uh, a0 plus a1 minus 2a0t. Uh, we can put a 0 as 1, I suppose, and a1 will have exactly 4. So here is uh, 1 plus 2t. So f of t is 1 plus 2t over the 1 minus 2t minus 4t squared. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, 
Okay, let's continue to the next lecture. So uh, last time we started just start discussing uh, the question of planarity or embedding in plane of graph. Uh, so I remind you that we uh, so we say that. Uh, we have so gra graph is planar is if it can be embedded on a plane, and we discussed that we have such uh, if if we have some drawing on a plane, then we can speak about uh, so we have the number of vertices of vertices. Uh, the number of edges and the number of faces. So if if we, if we uh, if graph is planar, then we can embed them on a plane, and we can uh, so the plane will be dissected into a, a number of connected re regions, which which are called faces, and I stated. Uh, theorem that if uh, graph G is connected and planar, then we'll have the following identity V minus E plus F equal to 2. And so we check this uh, identity for the uh, some polyhedrons, because we, di we discussed that uh, embedding on a plane is the same as uh, drawing the graph on a sphere. And so we can uh, look at all polyhedrons as a uh, planar graph. So for example, for the cube uh, and uh, octahedron and uh, tetrahedron, we have same formula. Okay, let's let's first prove the theorem and then discuss them if there are any uh, properties uh, that have uh, that planar graphs have. And so, have, can we have find a criterion for graph to be planar or not? So, we begin with the proof of the theorem. Uh, we prove it by induction. Uh, say by the number of uh, edges, for example. So in base situation, if we have edges equal to equal zero, then we have only a graph with uh, one vertex, one vertices, one vertex, and uh, so it's yeah. sorry. Yes, number of vertices is one, and uh, the number of faces is also one. It's just a whole plane, and we have so this equality holds. It will be one minus one plus one, uh, one minus zero plus one equal to. Uh, so, suppose theorem holds So, yeah, yeah, uh, so if you have connected graph on the plane with no edges, it means that we have only one vertex, yeah, because if you have fewer, it will be not connected. Okay, uh, suppose the theorem holds for uh, for a number of edges equal to uh, less or equal than n, and uh, uh, 
let g be connected planar graph with n plus 1 edges. Okay, let's look at the picture. So, uh, what can be happening? So, we have uh, exactly two different possible situations. Let's look at, so, uh, if the graph is connected, uh, then we uh, can, uh, so we can find such edge that if we cut them out, the graph, so, uh, okay, maybe I'll write this down. So we have two possible situations. First possible situations uh, that we have a cycle in the graph. Uh, so if there are cycle in the graph, we can take each of edge from the cycle. So we have like some cycle and we uh, cut one of the edges from the cycle. It means that we have uh, Uh, so, the new graph will have less edges. We can apply theorem uh, for this graph. It will be planar. But now we have the same amount of vertices, but uh, the one less of faces because these two faces which connected by, so uh, which, uh, so this edge is the border of exactly two faces. And if we cut them out, then this face and the uh, neighbor face uh, about this edge will be will be one face. So we have uh, edges. We will have minus one edges, the same number of vertices, and faces will be. Um, one less face we will have. And so, if uh, our proposition is true, then we have uh, identity that V minus E minus 1 plus F minus 1 is 2. And so, if we open the bracket, then we'll have uh, our statement. Okay, uh, what if we have no cycles? Uh, this means that we have graph connected and without cycles. It means that this is three. And so if we have three, then we can find a uh, edge. Uh, uh, which is connected to the, uh, so again, if, if we leave out the edge and one of the words of the end of it, then the graph will still have connected. Uh, then there exists an edge such that cutting it out with vertex will remain the graph connected. Okay, but I, I don't know if I need to use the, uh, so maybe I, I just can simply say that if we have no cycle, then we have only one phase. And you know that for the tree, we'll have that number of vertices is number of edges plus one. It's just the proven of it. So if we have three, then we have uh, we can remain we can cut enough one of the edge 
uh, with the vertex will remain the graph connected, and then we will have for the rest of the graph, uh, you will have this identity, and so this identity holds for the uh, each tree. But uh, so I can just prove it one once more time, or just use this property of the tree, and then uh, again we have this identity. So if you minus e plus f will be uh, equal e plus one minus e plus one, which is exactly two. And so we'll prove this theorem for the connected graphs. What? Yeah. Uh, there exists such so uh, there exists H, which uh, so uh, which is not the how to call it, which is not the bridge. So if I cut them out with one of the vertex, the graph, the remaining graph will be connected. And um, so if you, if you know what it's so, we just can start. So if you have three. Then we can just start from any vertex, and then we'll just go in. So if if uh, how will we find this edge? Uh, if if graph G is three, then we always have a vertex uh, which have um, of degree one, which have degree one. Because if any vertex has de has degree two or more, then we have a cycle because we start from the edge, then going if, yeah. So we have. A vertex with uh, degree only one, and we take this vertex and delete, delete it with the uh, co corresponding edge. And so, if we delete, uh, so if we delete one vertex and one edge, then we again uh, can use the induction hypothesis, and we'll have. So we have, we still have one phase, and uh, then we'll have that v minus e plus f is two, and then we add one vertex here and one edge here, and so the, the identity will remain the same. I just explained it two different types. Okay. So this is the uh, easiest version of the theorem. Of course, we can uh, prove the uh, so what happens if the graph G is not connected if G is planar, then the following equality holds. V minus E plus F is one plus, plus I don't know, C. For C is the number of, of connected components. Uh, of graph. So we already proved it for where a graph is connected. If C is one, then we use uh, the theorem. So uh, I just wrote this on the last lecture, but I, I don't wrote it now. This is called the uh, Euler formula. Uh, so by theorem, we just proven that if graph is connected, then V minus C plus F is equal to equal to. And if we have different components, we can just compare them uh, one by one. So if we have uh, like different connected components here, then we can uh, just look uh, that for each of these connected components. Uh, hold the the Euler form of holes, and then the only difference is that the, that the outer face is the common for each of these graphs. So when we uh, uh, so for each the way I can just renumerate it. And uh, and 
look what happens if we summarize all these equations and all the difference is that uh, so I just need to something like so sum of uh, so if you summarize uh, the number of vertices, number of edges, number of faces in each of this component, we will be getting to C. Uh, but now we know that so this is the number of vertices, this is the number of edges, but this is a uh, number of faces uh, except for the outer face is the common for all of this one. And so we count this uh, face exactly C times so we can uh, wrote here something like c minus one because we count c times and we need count only one time and so now we can uh, yeah but now we can just uh Move it to the right. Yeah, this improves the of color. Yes. Yeah, so this is so yeah. And so so again if if we just draw all the component components and write the this formula to prove it by each of the component then the number of this number of the face so i just can check that we have f1 minus one inner faces and one out one outer and this we have f2 minus one inner faces uh okay so uh if we summarize all this interfaces then we have like f1 plus f2 plus f3 plus so plus fs minus s faces and so we need to add uh one faces one face um and uh So this is what we need to. So this is what we need to calculate. But here, if we summarize it, we will have uh, uh, by c, c minus one faces more. So we need to cut them out. Okay. Do you understand it? Oh, do you have some questions? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so, for example, if you have only yes, so, so suppose we have only uh, two connected components, so we have the same identity for the, each of the, this connect component, but this connect components have one common face or outer face. So we have uh, so for example we have here v one minus E1 plus F1 equal 2, V2 minus E2 plus F2 equal 2. And so if we summarize them, we have 1 minus E plus F1 plus F2 equal 2. But what is F1 plus F2? F1 plus F2, uh, if, we, if we summarize them, we have we will F plus 1 because 
uh, we we, calcul we calculate uh, outer face two times except 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 for one. And so we need to uh, uh, take here. Sorry? Yeah, so I just summarized these two equations. Yeah, sorry, this, this is four, of course, yes. So, uh, what is F1 plus F2? F1 is number of faces of this connected component, and F2 is number of faces of this connected component. If I summarize them, I just calculate all the faces, but outer face will count in twice. So I need to, if I, if I need to get the number of the faces, I need to take this minus one. And so for the two connected components, my formula will change. So V minus E plus F will be equal to three, not to four. Not, not to two, but to three. Because uh, now we have here additional connected components. So we can generalize our statement for all planar graphs. And uh, so we have different connected components. We can prove the following identity. Yes. Here we have the last one. Yes. They share the same outer outer face. Yeah. Outer. Yeah. Outer outer region. Yeah. And so in in uh, so if you have uh, more connected components, so they are also shared one uh, outer outer region. And so we need to take here f plus t minus one. Okay. Uh, so another another remark that if we have so we proved uh, all the formula, it means that the number of faces of the drawing, number of faces, is uh, invariant of the drawing of the same graph. So the number of faces depend only on number of vertices and edges. So it means if you have the same graph, we can have uh, different embeddings on the plane, but all these embeddings will have the same number of faces because we have some uh, equality of V and V, E, and F and V, E, and the same, so the number of the faces will be also the same. Okay, so how can we uh, use this technique to prove that some graph is not planar? Well, we need to just find, uh, so if we have some uh, restrictions on the number of edges, of course, we have, we can have uh, the, uh, big amount of edges because it will prevent we, we can prevent them to uh, drawing on on a plane. So maybe we have some uh, restrictions here for the number of edges, and this can help us proving that some graphs is not planar. Uh, so let's. Uh, prove this following proposition. If J is planar, uh, do we need to suppose that G is connected? Maybe we can. So maybe it doesn't. I think it doesn't matter because if it's not connected, then we have less number of edges. I guess I can, I can get rid of it. And number of vertices is more more equal than three. Then number of edges is uh, less or equal than three v minus c. So we have some inequalities uh, con connecting the number of edges and number of vertices, from which we can just have. So we have 
just estimate number of edges for which we can uh, can have the planarity. So if edges number of edges is big enough, then more than three v minus six, then the graph is not planar. So because uh, the maximal number of edges in the graph is is so for the complete graph we have like v times v minus one over two, so we just like uh, quadratic number of uh, the the square number of vertices and here we have some linear estimate for the number of edges okay so how can we prove it let's uh, look at a connection between edges and faces So we know uh, two properties. First of all, uh, faces have sorry. Yeah, this is the proof. Yeah, so I write the triangle. It means that we started in the proof. So faces have three or more edges on the border and uh, edges uh, uh, lies on the border of two, one or two faces belongs to one or two Faces. So we, if you have face, then we'll have like uh, some number of edges, three or more on the border, and each of the edges uh, belongs to uh, one or two faces. So maybe it has it is inner inner edge, uh, and we have only one face. But mm -hmm. otherwise, we'll have two faces. Uh, it means that if we have if we uh, multiply the number of edges by two, uh, so. Uh, we already so we we'll use this technique. We just count the number of pairs, edge and faces that uh, build, uh, edges and faces such that edges belong to face. So we can we want to calculate the number of pairs such that edge belongs to face F. And so if faces have three or more edges in the border, that means that if we fix, so if we fix the second coordinate, the, the face, then we have at least three or more edges. So it's uh, more or equal than three number of faces. But if we fix the edge, then we have only one or two faces here, so if we fix the first coordinate, then we'll have exactly one or two faces. So it uh, less or equal than two yeah, yeah, so this is this is this inequality and this is second inequality. Uh, so if we have if face has three on my on the border, it means that if we fix the second coordinate, then we'll have at least three edges on the border here. And so we have for, for each face, we have at least three or more edges. So this number is uh, more equal than three faces. So the minimal number of the such pairs is 3f when each face contains exactly three edges. And this, uh, this, if we, if we fix the number of edges, then we have either one or two faces which 
these edges belong to because each each edge will belong either uh, one face if it's if it's inner edge so it can be it has been belong to one face or have two faces if it is just bordering the two faces this inequality yes. so uh, if we fix the first coordinate then we have one or two faces here so if we have double all number of edges we count all these pairs but maybe uh, some of them so uh, so we, we will calculate all the number of edges except for the cases if we have only uh, one face which edge belong to then we uh, count this uh, more times it's the number of such pairs edge face which where edge is belong to face so i can explain it uh, so another way to explain it is just to uh, try to find the uh, maximal number of edges in the planar graph so if we oh, if we try to draw maximal number of uh, maximal number of edges so maybe uh, maybe my uh, maybe my encode is wrong so, so let me think uh, no it's it's it should be true okay uh so if we try to draw maximum number of edges, then what happens? So we, we just have some planar graph. And then we uh, uh, so we, for example, in this picture, we can connect. So we can look at each pair of vertices. And if there are no edges between these vertices, we can try to draw it and, and look if uh, it ca it graph can also be planar so for example in this picture we can draw this edge this edge and also we can connect so the outer the outer face will have too much edges so we can just connect it these guys these guys and so on sorry inside, inside yeah, yeah of course and this one yeah uh so if we look at so if we draw the maximal number of edges, then we will have uh, the following property that each face we have exactly three edges inside of it. So uh, then each face has exactly three edges on the border or inside of it because if we have face with more than three edges then we can draw additional edge here and if we have uh, inner some uh, inner edge then we can also connect it and have uh, more faces so in this case we have the maximum number of 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 uh, yeah so if we, if we have it, so if we fix the number of vertices and try to find the maximal number of edges then the maximal number of edges uh, will have the following uh, equation because if each face has exactly three edges on the border and each edge belongs to the exactly two faces that means that we will have such uh, equality here and uh, 
yeah, but in so if if we uh, use this equation, then we can use the if we look at the weather formula v minus e plus f equal two. So our graph will be connected, and v minus e plus f equal two. Then uh, we can use this equality to find the number of vertices here, and so the number of vertices will have. Uh, so we can multiply it by six. Uh, maybe uh, we need to uh, to correlate it the, with the number of edges, so we can uh, multiply it by three. Have three v minus three e plus three f equals six, and so three v minus e equals six. E equal three v minus six. And so the maximum number of edges will be 3 minus 6, and in arbitrary graph will have less number of edges. So the maximum number of edges that we can have in planar graph is 3 v minus 6, and so for arbitrary graph, planar graph will have 3 e is less than or equal than 3 minus 6. Yeah, but this, so if it. But what is just uh, made is just for. Connected. Sorry? Connected. Why is it connected? No, I mean this is just for connected. No, no. If, if you have if you have not connected graph, then of course you can just draw additional edges to, just to be connected. So we can just ask if if you, sorry. Um, so we just can try to connect each of them. So in if you draw maximum number of edges, then the graph will, will be connected. But so. Um, so this is the estimate estimate equality, and the arbitrary situation will have the this inequality that to ease uh, more or less than three f. Uh, and this is because if we will be cutting our cutting out. So if we cut, if we if we draw additional edges, then we have uh, additional number of faces, and here faces are multiplied by three, and edges are multiplied by two. So it means that in arbitrary situation we have this inequality, and so we can prove uh, just using this inequality. So if two two e more or less than three f, then again if we have uh, connected graph, that, that means that this is uh, more greater than two, then we multiply it by three, and then we'll have that. Uh, 3v plus 3f. Uh, I need to use the inequality here. Inequality here, and we have 3 3e is equal to 3v minus 6 plus 3f, and this is less than 3v minus 6 plus 2e, and so. I have received the same inequality here. Okay, so if we prove this inequality, then we can check if this holds for sorry, if this holds for sorry, this is okay. So we can prove we can check if this holds for our two examples. Of maybe not non planar planar graphs. So, for example, let's try to prove that K5 is not planar graph. So, K5 is just a complete graph on the five vertices, so we have five points. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So the number of vertices is five. The number of edges is ten. Yeah. And if you look at this inequality, we can see that ten must be less or equal than three minus three times five minus six, which is nine, which is wrong. That means that k five is not planar.
we just check that we have one more edges than the, the estimate number of edges and we can have in plane graph. Uh, okay. What the, what about uh, bipartite full graph on three vertices? So we have three number of a six number of uh, vertices and nine number of edges. Uh, if we look, we can see that we need to this uh, inequality holds. Ah, so if we check this inequality, it's holds. It it is holding. So we cannot use this to prove the polarity of KC3. But now, if we look closely at the structure of this graph, we see that in this graph, all the cycles have length 4. So all cycles have length 4 or 6. Uh, because it is, uh, it has it, uh, bipartite, so has two different two parts, and so we cannot uh, return to the same part with the odd number of steps. It means that all cycles have lengths four or six, and if all cycles have lengths four or six, it means uh, that we have better inequality here, because now if if we draw it on a plane, then all faces have four or six edges on the border. It means that if K33 is planar, then each face has none less than four edges on the border. That means, if, so if we use the same technique, we can get uh, strict inequality, uh, more, strong, more strong inequality that we had before. So therefore, uh, we have inequality 2E uh, more or equal than 4N. Again, we calculate all the pairs of edges and all the pairs of edges and faces such that edge belongs to face, lies on the border of the space or in in, uh, in inner part of the space. But now each face has at least four edges on this border, and each edge uh, as before. Uh, lying on the uh, belongs to, to exactly one or two faces. So it has this inequality. And if we try to find so our graph is connected, so we can uh, use the early, form, early formula here. And so if we multiply it by four and then use our inequality, then we have that for uh, e should be or v plus 4f minus 2, which is a lot greater than 4v plus 2e minus 2. Uh, so 2e uh, will have not greater than 4 for v minus 2. And so we'll have uh, two uh, two e oh yeah sorry this should be eight here yeah sorry uh, 
I just he miscalculated. Yeah, so we have two times nine is less than two times six minus eight, which is sixteen, and here we have eighteen. So again, uh, we use some uh, some strong inequality using our specific uh, specific uh, specify the number of cycles in our graph to prove that k series three is not a polynomial graph. Okay. Uh, do you have questions? Okay, so uh, bipartite. So we have to. Uh, so we have two parts of three vertices, and we have each. So uh, we provide each edge between these two parts. So it's complete bipartite graph. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we, I, I don't know. So I think you you made this before, but of course you have. So just yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so, what about the whole situation? Actually, there is a court of case theorem. Which is, uh, states the exactly criterion for graph to be uh, planar. So I just give a statement and then I just try to explain what it, what it means. So graph G is planar uh, if and only if uh, there is no subgraph homeomorphic to K three three and K five. So these two examples here of non-planar graphs is the crucial example. So they are basic examples. And so if the graph has some kind of graphs, K3 and K5 inside of it, it means that it's uh, non-planar. And if it have no such graphs inside of, inside of him, that means it's not planar. But maybe I need to just say a few words about what I mean by say homeomorphic. And uh, uh, because what what is the problem? I can take k five and just uh, do some additional things. So, for example, I just take edge, for example, this edge, and just add one vertex. So I just change this graph and make this graph like to the similar graph, but uh, I add one edge and just uh, divide this edge in, in two parts. So, of course, if this graph is not planar, this graph is not planar, it's easy to see. But uh, the new graph has no subgraph isomorphic to K3, C, or K5. But, um, of course, it is similar to K, K5. And so, this uh, uh, kind of Changing in the graph is called uh, homeomorphism. So we just, uh, I would just exp explain it. So by homeomorphic, uh, we means that we cannot cannot obtain. Uh, subgraph. Uh, so maybe I'll just write the. So we just can. Mm. 
make the two uh, so what can we do to the graph to be the homeomorphic? we can just uh, g1 is homeomorphic g2 if we, if it can be obtained by doing these two types of things so first of all we can uh, take the edge then uh, draw a point in the middle of it and so they make two edges and so maybe i just need to check that it is yeah i think that so yeah uh, so we just need this so we can provide this to this operation uh many many times or just separating edges into parts or just gluing them together and so we can uh, take this graph will be homeomorphic uh, so if you have a graph in uh, so uh, so if you need to check the planarity of, the, of your graph you can just look at the uh, this trivial inequalities and i get that we obtain or maybe some just stronger versions of this inequality or just try to find if there are any subgraph which is homeomorphic to k33 or k5. Uh, this theorem, the proof of the theorem is just rather technical, so we just need to cover like five or six, I don't know, seven different cases. And I don't think that uh, it's uh, too valuable to provide it now, so I just think you can use it to prove some things. Okay. Uh, so I. I I think I just tell uh, something about the regular polyhedron, the classification of regular polyhedron, and then we'll have a little break. Um, okay, so I just remind you that on the uh, previous lecture i announced that uh, sorry. that actually with using of one of the application of Euler formula is just the is classification of a regular polyhedron. What I mean by regular polyhedron? So I just have uh, this three-dimensional uh, three-dimensional polyhedron, and uh, it's called regular. Uh, maybe there are these are rather different definitions, but of course, so each face, uh, each face must be, each face is uh, regular uh, polygon. So. Uh, the each the all faces uh, contain the same number of edges. The same number of edges, and all vertices belongs to the same number of faces so for example if you have like so we have cube then each face has exactly four edges each square and in each vertex we the exactly three faces meet so if you have like each of these vertices, each of these uh, vertices, then 
they belong exactly for three phases. So can we characterize all such polyhedrons where all phases contain the same number of edges and all vertices belong to the same number of faces? Uh, so we have these two properties and of course we have uh, formula for the vertices, edges and faces. How we can calculate the possible amount of uh, these vertices, edges and faces? So let's start. Uh, let's uh, uh, have some denotations. We could just want to uh, like row the same number of edges. For example, each. Oh, sorry. Uh, each face contains exactly k number of edges, and all vertices is belong for the same number i don't know l l l number of of the faces uh, what does it mean for the uh, so how, how we can apply it for this equality so what does it mean that for example that all faces contain uh, the same number of edges we already know that so if we double the number of edges, it will be exactly k times l. Again, we so if we look at all at all number of edges, so each edge belongs exactly for the two face, two faces, and so if we calculate all the pairs edge and face where edge belongs to the face. It means we, we calculate the two of edges and we calculate the k times faces because there are exactly k edges in each of the face. Uh, on the other hand, from the second equation, so if all vertices belong to the same number of faces, exactly l, l, l faces, it means that um, uh, each, if, if face contains the k edges, it means that uh, face contains the same number of words. Yes, because if we have like this face, so it, if it have six verses, of course it have it have six edges. It is exactly the number of verses. So number of verses. This means that if I multiply L times V, this will be exactly K times F. Yes, because again, so if each, uh, so if I calculate the pairs of vertices and face where vertices is uh, belong to the face, I will calculate each face exactly k times and each verse is exactly l times. So I'll have these two equalities. Okay, so I can just uh, wrote all of these guys in terms of uh, maybe the number of vertices. I suppose it will be, so if I uh, I, so I can I can just uh, what will be helpful for me. So let's 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 do it with vertices, and if if we need to change it, we will change it. Okay, so I'll have the following equality: L times V is equal to K times F equal to two times E. Uh, it's the same reason. So uh, again. So we have all vertices belong to the same number of faces. So each vertex, so each vertex belongs to the same number of faces, say, say for example, three face. Okay, then, so here, for example, for the cube, each face uh, contain exactly four vertices. 
and each vertex belongs to the three exactly to the three faces. It means that if I calculate all the pairs vertex and face such as vertex uh, lies in the, lies in this face belongs to this face. It means that uh, so for each for each vertex I calculate exactly three number of, of the faces, so it have three v here. And for each face I will have four number of vertices. So I will have four 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 f here. So the same reason. So for bit L and K, I'll have this equation. Um, so I can just write it something like v minus two over L. Uh, sorry, v. So E is L v over two. plus L over K times V is equal to two. So I uh, have something like one over L minus one over two plus a one over k is two over LV. So we need just to find how many numbers of so how many possible we have n k and l v such that this uh, equality holds. So maybe uh, yeah okay so uh, maybe it's more useful to roll this with a number of edges. Uh, so. Let me see if it's because, uh, yeah, I think we can also calculate this one. Yeah, so for example, why is there no much no more possibilities for the this inequality? So we have one over L plus one over K is equal to two LV plus one over two, and so we get that 1 over L plus 1 over K is more than equal than 1 over 2. Yes, but of course we have no much possibilities for the L and K such that this uh, two ratios will be, uh, adding will be bigger than 1 over 2. So what, what are the possibilities? Uh, so Let's check it and also check if we, if we can have the number of V's such that this is hold. So, for example, we cannot have... Uh, uh, so, we can have... Uh, so, we have some here, some restrictions. Of course, all the face contains some number of, same number of edges. And the number of edges must be at least lowered here. So k is non less than three, and all vertices can belong to the edges, and, and of course uh, all vertices belong to the center of edges, and also this face must be at least three. So we can road uh, these possibilities. Uh, if l equals three, k equals three. Then we'll have uh, 2 over LV is 2 third minus 1 over 2, which is uh, 1 over 6. So LV is 12 and V is 4. Who knows what, is, what the regular poly polyhedron will have these properties?
So what regular polyhedron has exactly three number of edges in each face, each uh, in each vertex the exactly three faces. Each vertex belongs to exactly the three faces, and we have exactly these four vertices here. What is the regular polyhedron? Right. What is the regular polyhedron with these um, parameters? Where I have four vertices, four vertices and each edge, each face a triangle, and each vertex belongs to the exactly three faces. Yeah, how it's called? The dragon, yeah. So this is the dragon. Okay. Uh, can we have more? So we have here, if we have uh, L is 4, K is 3, then we have 2, uh, so 2 over 4 plus 1 over 3 is 2 over 4 V plus 1 over 2, and so V is uh, Is it, if it is correct, but so we have four v equals six, which is not good. Sorry. Uh, so we have if we have k equals three, uh, l equal oh, sorry, k, uh, l equal three, k equal four. Uh, then we have. Oh, sorry, but one. Oh, sorry, made mistake here. Yeah, sorry. But if a three faces in the you cannot have any equal you cannot have a T equal to Yeah, but maybe maybe I oh, let's check it. So we have one over four plus one over three is equal to 2 for v plus 1 over 2. Or maybe I'll just make a mistake here. Uh, so 2 over 1 over 2 v is uh, 1. Uh, 1. Yeah. Is it right? Oh, it's one, it's one over 12. Yeah, okay, so V is equal to six, okay. So we have this second option. Uh, what is this regular polyhedron? So we have each face is square. Each, uh, we have exactly six vertices and each Well, maybe maybe it's, it's it's easier to find the number of edges. Number of edges will be uh, so. This is exactly the two number of edges. So the edges will be yes. LV is two number of edges. So we have twelve edges. Uh, so what is the regular polyhedron here? Uh, are you with me? Maybe have some questions. Is 
But okay, okay. So do you do not regular plicket in which faces are just squares? Each pair is a square, so it contains four edges, and in each vertex belongs exactly to three edges, and then we have exactly six. Uh, maybe not six. Uh, oh no, I just mispronounced. So we have so k is. Uh, so each each is face are triangles, and there are exactly four vertex. Uh, each vertex belong to the four four faces. Okay, but maybe maybe this will help you. So if you have eight vertices, each faces are square, and each vertex belongs to three faces. Then you know what is no. Ah, the name is not. Okay, so this is so okay. This is cube. Yes. Which of what which one of this is cube? This is Yeah, so this is cube. And this is the view of the cube, it's called octahedron. I just draw it. So uh, it is dual to the cube. If you just take the center, so the center of the face of the cube, and just draw the edges, we will have the octahedron. Uh, sorry. So we have six vertices, uh, the faces are triangles, and each vertex belongs to exactly four faces. Okay, uh, what can we have else? So if we take L4, K4, then we have here exactly one over two, but then one, two or LV will be zero, which cannot, cannot happen. So we can't have this uh situation so we can take four four it means that we can also take three five and five three and that's all because if we take one of them is equal to six then uh again one third one third plus one six is one over two but we need to be so this limit is strictly bigger so this is the last two cases if l3 l equal to three and k equal to five let's check so one over 3 plus 1 over 5 minus 1 over 2 is uh, let me check it so it will be 8 over 15 minus 1 over 2 which is uh, 16 1 over 30 and so I will have 130 equal to 2 over LV so it means that LV is uh, 60 and so in the first case we'll have v equal to 20 and the second v is equal to 12. And so one of them is called icosahedron, one of them is called the dodecahedron. But I just, uh, I think the icosahedron has 20 vertices, but I need to check it because I also don't remember which of them have exactly the same number of so the faces are triangles, it's, yeah, I was right. So this is, they named after the number of vertices. So that with 20 vertices, we have the decahedron and with 12 vertices, we have ecosahedron. Okay, so I just proved that we have exactly five regular polyhedron in three dimensions. We have, we can have more because of the Euler formula, which I have the restrictions on the number of uh, uh, edges in, in faces and vertices that belong to the same number of the face. Okay, I think we'll take uh, like 10 minutes break. 
and then uh, so I will give you some examples on the regular polyhedron and we have some exercises of just uh, checking if some graphs are planar or not planar and then if we have some more time we just uh, we will discuss the chromatic number of planar graph so we have an so we have an intersection of the edges and when we have an restrictions of the chromatic number of planar graph uh okay so maybe you have questions now maybe i will uh, i read some material very fast or oh, is it okay because i i don't think that this is this material is very hard but i don't see any uh back so, um, Okay, so about uh, regular polyhedron, we can ask yourself about uh, structure of a soccer ball. So if you know, if you look at a soccer ball, it usually uh, contains uh, pentagons and hexagons. So it has like the shape of soccer ball is gluing like pentagons and, hexagon, and uh, hexagons such that in uh, so each vertex has degree three. So we have properties so uh, all faces are pentagons or hexagons. All vertices have degree three, so it have uh, three edges coming out of this, all all the vertices. Okay, so the question is how many pentagons are there? So can we can we have some? Restrictions on the number of pentagon in such shape of circle ball. So we have like uh, polyhedron. It's not regular polyhedron because we have different uh, shapes of. So we have uh, different different polygons here, but it's like almost almost regular pentagon because we have only regular pentagons and regular hexagons here. And the question is how many numbers are how many numbers of pentagons can be uh, obtained in such polyhedrons. Okay, uh, so the quest, second question is just check the planarity of the following graphs, and I will just draw some pictures to. No, the number the number of pentagons, the number of pentagons doesn't depend on the size of the ball. Because so there will be the people the okay. First of all, maybe I just need you to give the answer of how uh, many pentagons can be there. So for example, the answer can be the number of pentagons should be divisible by I don't know, twenty, for example. It can be yeah. twenty, forty, and so on. So I just so for example can be at least exactly one pentagon maybe so I assume not one pentagon cannot be obtained here but maybe there are some restrictions on the number of pentagons and I will find you what are all the possible situations here. Uh, and so I just I should I just draw some uh, pictures here. Mm. And later we'll check if this so I just uh, draw some. Uh, 
Kurovsky and uh, you will try to check is there a possible Oh no. Uh, okay, so I will give you like we can discuss the first problem in like ten or fifteen minutes, and the other problems in uh, more ten or fifteen minutes. But if you have questions, you can ask them. Yeah. Okay, so maybe you have questions or you need to hit. Are they are they here? No. Okay, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, but uh, I know how to. I don't know how to provide a seminar if no one, no one is here, <laughs> because it's uh, yeah. I can maybe I just can uh, explain solutions and con continue discussing some problem. I I don't know. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so. For the first problem, yeah. How many? Yeah. So, so we need to just try to use the conditions and use them into. Uh, uh, Euler formula and just cal try to calculate the number of pentagons. So Euler formula will be V minus E plus L F equal to So what do we know? All places are hex pentagons and hexagons. So let's say that we have uh, I don't know the number of pentagons 
and h number of hexagons. So this means uh, that uh, then we can calculate the number of Try, we try to find the number of vertices, edges, and faces using the number of pentagons and hexagons. So, for example, if we want to calculate the number of edges, we just, each pentagon has five edges, each hexagon has, has six edges, and so we can divide them over two because we count each edge two times. Yeah. Uh, what about the number of vertices? Again, we calculate the number of vertices in each uh, face. So each face contains uh, five, five vertices or six vertices, five vertices pentagon, six vertices is hence, hence, hexagon. And then we need to divide them over three because of vertices has degree three. Exactly. So this is, uh, And the number of faces is just the number of pentagons plus the number of hexagons. Yeah, but so we just uh, use this to to put this into formula here. So what do we get? 5p plus 6h over 2 is minus plus 5p plus 6h over 3 plus p plus h is equal two mm, and so we can see that uh, we can multiply it by six so we have minus minus three uh, maybe I may need to draw more mm. oh, accurately. So it will be two times five p plus six h minus three five p plus six h plus six p plus h is equal to twelve. So this is just like minus five p minus six h plus six p plus six h equal twelve, and from this we can find the number of pentagons that should be twelve. So this is a unique possible situation for this regular for this polyhedron to occur. So we need the number of pentagons to be exactly twelve. So for example, if you have, uh, if you check the soccer ball, the soccer ball has exactly uh, twelve hexagons and uh, twenty hexagons and twelve pentagons. Uh, and exactly the soccer ball is just uh, you take icosahedron, the regular polygon, and then some of the you cut of the, uh, some of the words you cut near the near the uh, point, the vertex, and then you cut such that the faces become the hexagon. So you will have exactly 12 pentagons. So, it, it, for example, it's not possible to construct polyhedron using only hexagons. It's not possible. It is not possible to take, I know, 10, 12, 10, 20, any different number of pentagons except for 12. Uh, okay. Um, if you want to about so if you just look at these pictures then okay what about them sorry yeah is it planar or not uh yes but if it's not planar you need to find like K5 or K33 inside it. Or maybe just used in quality like E uh, is non greater than 3 E minus 6. So we have here um, how much? 
So we have here six vertices and oh, one, two, three, four, five. So if we uh, look at these three vertex vertices, then we see that each of these vertex has degree three, and they are not connected to each other. Yes. No. This so we have we, we don't have edge between two of them. Yes. Yeah. And the same holds for the this the vertices. So this is exactly graph K33, but we are just do a different drawing of it. So we have three yellow vertices, three green vertices, and each yellow connected with each green vertices. Okay, so we have this yellow connected with all green, this green, this yellow with this, and this yellow with this. So we have nine, nine edges, six vertices, in the same graph as KT3, and this is not a planar. So this is not, not planar. Um, okay, for this, for this graph, uh, you can see that picture is similar to the K5, because if we get rid of this subgraph, we can just will have just k5 and so we have so if we delete these verses and all these edges and glue them together then we have can find graph uh, homeomorphic to k5 so it's also not playing out uh okay well, this guy, so the problem we have with, the, so, the, so we have only two problems here and here. Yeah, yeah, we can just put, put, oh, sorry. So we just can draw it here and for example here. Yeah, okay. And so here's the last one. So we can, we just, first attempt, we can calculate the number of edges and uh, vertices. So we have one, two, Five, eight. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You, we have eight vertices here. Oh, the number of edges will be, oh, it's, uh, I will try, but maybe one, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Oh, and here's one more, 19. So if I'm correct, so we have four and four, just eight. We have 12 and 15 and yeah, four more. So we have 19 edges edge here, but now we just use it in a call that they already proved and check that this is wrong. 
So we uh, this is not a planar graph, and we can try to find the K5 or K33 inside this group. Uh, 3V minus 6 is the quantity that we proved already. Yeah, but we can check. T uh, so we can try to find subgraph isomorphic to K, homeomorphic to K5 or K33 here. Uh, if we try, but. Uh, So we can just start from the. Uh, so how can how, how can we find the graph homeomorphic to, for example, try to try to find the subgraph homeomorphic to K five? Uh, we just take the five words, five arbitrary vertex here. So for example, this five, and try to draw all possible connections between these vertices. So we have here. Uh, five vertices, and how many edges? Three, six, eight edges. So we need just two more edges to show that this graph, this subgraph, is going over to K five. So we need to construct an edge between the uh, the opposite opposite of the diagonals. Yeah, but we can, can connect so these two vertices this way and these two vertices by uh, in the other way. In other way, yes, but maybe so is is it correct that we can use one vertex twice, or maybe we can. Maybe so. So it's like so. We have like, and this connection, yes. So we can like this. Yeah, I think that's not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so we have like an hour. So let's talk about the coloring of, of linear graphs. Uh, and so there are uh, there are three different questions. So we can color the edges, we can color the vertices, and we can color the faces. But two of them are kind of similar to, to each other because the uh, uh, planar duality of the graphs. Oh, it's called, I don't know, geometric dual in some uh, books. So we can just, if we have some, uh, we, we already discussed it. So in, uh, when we discuss regular polyhedrons, we have cube and octahedral that do to each other uh, in terms of if we take the uh, regular polyhedron, take the point in the center of all the face, and then connect them with all the edges, then we have this dual regular polyhedron to the, uh, uh, the regular polyhedron. But we can do this for any planar graph. So if you have some uh, plane graph drawing on a plane, we can do the uh, following construction. We just put 
uh, a point into each of the face. And then we connect faces which have a common border. So we provide all the, oh, sorry. Uh, we provide all the edges between faces which have common, common edges. And so this graph is called dual graph for So again, we I explained this. So we have uh, so the new vertices are faces, and we provide the edge between the two uh, faces if they have if they have the common border. And so if you uh, so uh, we can so we can uh, denote the do by just star, and it is uh, not not very hard to see that if we stick second do it with the same graph so if we now take the point in any of the face and, and do the, the, the same construction then we have the initial graph and so if you're coloring the vertices of if you're coloring the face it's the same idea so it's the same properties we have because uh, we can just take the dual graph and if you're coloring the vertices we can color in the face and vice versa so actually we we can uh, talk only of coloring edges and vertices and so uh, let's start to prove some proposition lemma I don't know how to call it so if graph G is planar then the chromatic number of g is not not greater than six by chromatic number i mean that we color the, all the vertices uh, such that the vertices which have the common edge has different colors so if if we have uh non uh, less less edges than arbitrary graph then of course the chromatic number must should be non bigger than some amount of so it, it can it can be arbitrary big, but now we can estimate by six. And to prove it, uh, I just can. Uh, so I want to prove that if we have a planar graph, uh, so we we'll prove first lemma that if G is planar, then there exists a vertex. Uh, of degree non less than six, I suppose. But maybe we can uh, restrict it to five.
Uh, yeah, so maybe we can just prove that for five. Oh, maybe you don't need to. Yeah, uh, let's prove the lemma. So suppose this is not true. Suppose the contradictory uh, so all all vertex all vertices has degree more or greater than six then Okay, so let, let's calculate the number of vertices. So we have some inequalities between the number of vertices and number of edges. So each, if this vertex has degree 6, so we know that if we uh, summarize the degree of all vertices, then we'll have the double number of edges. Yes, because each edge will, count, will, will be counted twice. If all vertices has degree more than equal than six, then we'll have inequality that it will be uh, more or, or equal than six v. But so we will have that number of edges will be greater than three v. But we know that this is three v minus six. So this is the contradiction. So maybe it's just. A, Sorry? Yeah, it's just the handshake lemma, I suppose. So the, the sum of all degrees of the vertices is equal to two, two number of edges. Yeah. And if all the vertices have degree more than equal than six, then this is greater than six V. And so three V is not greater than E, but we know that E is not greater than three V minus six, which is contradiction. Uh, but of course, so, uh, I prove this lemma of e less than three v minus six when when the number of vertices is greater than three. But if we have less than three vertices, then of course they have they can have the degree more or equal than six. So this proves this lemma. So we have the vertex of degree non greater than five in our graph. So we can have the vertex. So all the vertices can cannot be uh, of degree bigger than six. But if we have, so now if we have the vertex of degree non less than five, then we have, uh, can we, ha we can get the coloring of this graph. So the main idea, so if, if we have this vertex of uh, degree five, then for arbitrary coloring, we can color this vertex because uh, even if all, all the neighbors will be coloring a different color, we have exactly six colors. So we can have the last color to color this vertex. And so the idea is to, so we, if we want to prove the proposition, then we just take by induction, induction by the number of vertices, induction by number of vertices of course if, if we have more than six vertices then we can call the graph into six colors and base for v is not less than six and uh, step so if we have graph g find uh, vertex V with degree non equal than five, cut it out on the graph, color the graph G minus V. So we just cut off the vertex V and color the uh, remaining graph. It has the lesser number of vertices, then we can color it in six colors. And then we'll have this picture that uh, 
we have the vertex V, it is connected with the exactly five different vertices. And if we have five different colors, then we have six, six color in the vertex V. So if we can color this G minus V, then we can color G. So if we, if we can color G minus V, then we can color G. And so we can color all the graphs into six colors. Uh, but actually here we can uh, so give us the most strong, most strongly statement. So the theorem, actually we can make it five. We can make it five colors. So if G is planar, then actually the chromatic number of G is not greater than five. Again, we prove it, so the, the, the main idea is the same, we prove it by induction. The base is the same. Uh, and by induction step, if we have the vertices of degree four, So start with G. So uh, if we have if we have a vertex of degree four, then we can use the same trick as we saw before and color this vertex into the fifth color. So we just cut this vertex off, coloring all the remaining graph, and then add this vertex and color this into fifth color if we have four different colors at the end of a G. At the, end of this edge. Same trick works here. Okay, so the the bad situation, the second situation, that we don't have a vertex of degree four. So the minimal number, minimal number of, uh, so is, is we have a vertex with degree non greater than five, then we have the vertex of degree exactly five. Okay, so let's draw a picture here. So we have this vertex uh, and It has degree five, and the problem is that we have so maybe we have a situation where we have all five possible colors used at the end of these edges, and then we can so if if we use only four colors to color uh, of this neighborhood edges to this one, uh, then we can color it in the the fifth color. But so the problem is when we use all five colorings of these edges and we cannot, uh, so we cannot use color to, so we don't have, we don't have color to this new vertex. Uh, but now we use the conception of planarity and we try to redraw so we, we can ask a sort of question, can we just redraw all some part of this graph such that uh, some of these uh, colors will be the same. So for, for example, mm. we can ask a question of, uh, for example, can we just, so what happens if we just change, for example, the color one to the color three here. What happens? Yeah, uh, so it is bad if we have the edge 
with the color three here. And uh, what happens? So if we, if we color this one to three, then we can we should color this three to one. But if again will be a problem if we have the coloring here. So here we will have the vertex of color one, and so on. Uh, but the main idea is: Do we have a connection of edges which coloring of one and three such that is connected to this vertex? So if we have, uh, so let's let's just talk only about the vertices of color one and three. If we have here the color component of this of uh, this colors. Then we can just change the colors. So we can just color uh, change the colors one and three uh, between themselves. So we can color one and three and three and one. And so we can, if we can do this, then we can color the V and color one. But if there is no connected component, it means that they somehow uh, we can have this connected to this. Vertex, and then we have bad case because we can color. So if if we change color one to three, then this vertex will change into three to one, and it's bad case. But now, uh, what idea do we have? So we uh, can take for each power for each pair of the colors. We just look if we have this connection. And the idea of the planarity is, for example, if we have connected with one and three this way, then of course we can connect the two with four this way because they will be intersect with each other somewhere here. But here they can be intersecting because we have here provide all all the edges only of colors one and three, and this all the edges of color two and four. And so they can be connected. So if we, for example, have this connection, then uh, if we, if we draw the same conic component, for example, for colors two and four, then they they cannot go outside of this face, and so we can change the colors of two and four. So exactly there are two so exactly there are two possibilities. Either we, we can connect it uh, this vertex with this only with colors one and three, or this vertex and this vertex with only colors two and four, and so. Uh, in either of these two situations, either we can color this two and four and change colors here, or we can just use the one, three and change colors here. So this is the main idea. I think you can just, so uh, actually uh, we have here like some uh, geometric intuition here, but so by, by the connection, I mean that we, we can just, for each two colors, we can draw like, uh, graph k5 and so we can find we can find the two colors that can be connected because we can k5 is not a planar graph that means that we don't have either of these edges uh, provided so we don't have this connection between some one of two colors and so we can draw this we can redraw this and draw it into the fifth color okay uh, but ac actually, actually, there is a theorem. I don't know if, if you if, if you read or not. That uh, so the estimate number of colors is four, and there is a theorem that proved actually by the. Uh, uh, so there was there was there was written an algorithm just to try and uh, find all the cases, all the possible cases of uh, coloring maps, and so there is just uh, two two. So the proof is will be two techniques, but there was a theorem, I think in like 1979, if I if I remember correctly, that. Every map, every map can be coloring into four colors. Every map 
can be coloring into four colors. So by the meaning, you will just take the map of the Earth. You can see that we have uh, countries there, and we want to color them such that the countries which have the common border, which is which can be colored by the different colors. And of course, we can so by uh, simplifying, we can assume that each uh, each country is connected part, connected region of the map. So we. Usually in, in real life it's not true because some countries can have different parts in so they are not usually connected different parts in, so they can uh, uh, they have different parts in different um, parts of the world so they have can have two or three different regions but now if you, if you assume that they have only one region then we can color them into four colors. So this, this theory means that exactly the chromatic number is equal to four. So uh, by the duality, by the dramatic duality that we discussed before, this means exactly that uh, this is equivalent to the statement that if G is planar, then chromatic number is non, non greater than four. Uh, so maybe as an exercise, I can give you. So can you provide a map, or maybe uh, example of graph, uh, planar graph with chromatic number exactly four because uh, so we just take sure that we cannot use the better upper bound here so the four is just good so we can we can have graphs with chromatic number equal four which is planar uh, do someone has example of it can someone provide an example of planar graph with chromatic number equal to four Is someone here in chat in Zoom? Is alive? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is? Do you can provide an example with chromatic number of four? Professor, uh, sorry, I just joined. Did miss yeah, it. yeah. Well, I think I'm the only alive one who doesn't know anything <laughs> from okay. today's lecture. <laughs> so. uh, yeah. Okay. So I just. Uh, yeah, so the easiest example is just K4, which can can be uh, drawn on, so it's planar, it can be drawn on a plane, and it has exactly the chromatic number equal 4. But your example is also so it's just chromomorphic to K4, so I think it also has chromatic number equal 4, yeah. Because... Yeah, but, but maybe not. So just, but why can I just put, so one, is this one color, this two color, this is three color. What is the problem here? So maybe we have reference only three coloring, but not four coloring. But if if it take key four, then chromatic number will be exactly four. Uh, okay, I think that's all for today. Uh, I don't know if, so I suppose that the next lecture will be not fully online, but you can come to the uh, auditorium and listen here. So uh, the, so maybe we'll take a few more 
remarks about the planar graph, and then we can move to the uh, Hamiltonian and Euler graph. So we just uh, look at uh, either we can provide a cycle covering all the edges or all the vertices of our graph. And then we can take off, uh, we can discuss look, such, com such concepts as Ramsey numbers. But I also ask you if you have uh, any uh, possible topics to discuss in graph theory. So if you have any um, suggestions, you can tell me or we can discuss, discuss it here. So you can write me in Telegram or just discuss in the next lecture if you want to me to cover some topics in graph theory. But I think that's all for today. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can ask me now. Professor, yeah. I think uh, it's better to maybe uh, if you want to give us some uh, give us some choices for the topics and we choose uh, among those choices. Yeah, of course. I will. Yeah, yeah. I will bring me some topics. So I just maybe ha we'll have a poll in Telegram. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Great. I appreciate it. Okay. Then, if you have no questions, then thank you and see you next week.